What's up everyone, Jason Brown here, the king of programming, back at the whiteboard for another programming session. You guys said you loved the last one, we did full body programming, and um, I love, personally love doing these, and I love doing this one more than the last one because it's about 20 degrees cooler this time when we're doing this one, which is great. But um, needless to say, you guys really liked the last one, and I wanna do many more of these. So I would appreciate if you let me know in the comments what you wanna see. I had a lot of people say they wanted to see how you would tweak for this, how you would tweak for that. And I just wanna preface this by saying that the last one I did, there is a lot of room to potentially kind of gear that towards your own specific goals. If you're training for an event, there's a lot of room within that programming. And that's why I like full body programming because it's not as rigid as say a conjugate split, which is what we're gonna do today. But needless to say, there's a lot of room to make some concessions, if you will, for specific things. And that comes down to many different things, which we could go down the rabbit hole with on another time. But for today, we're gonna get into the conjugate split. And I think it would be, wouldn't be as fair for me to sit here and do splits that I don't advocate. And one thing that I am always gonna be true with, with the, the content I put out is that it's real and it's things that I do and it's things that I have done. Um, I have done not every split, but I have done a lot of different splits over the years. And when I was a young coach, I experimented heavily. I went down the bodybuilding route. I went down body part split. I went down German volume. I did daily undulating periodization. I did linear periodization. You name it. I've done a lot of different styles of training, which I think everyone should do. When you're on that journey, there are things that you discover that work best for you. What works best for you might not work best for me. I will not do a body part split ever. You couldn't pay me enough to do a body part split. I can't stand it. It is boring. I would rather watch paint dry than do a body part split. Now, there are people that love body part splits. If you are one of those people, great, do your body part split. But I think that the personality type is an important thing to consider when you are choosing a program. So when we have people that get into the wrong splits, they might make progress from it, but the question is, can they stick to it? And I am looking for the right person to stick to the program long-term. And the right person for me is someone that is very similar to me, former athlete, wants to stay competitive, but do so in a sustainable way. And that's something that, um, you know, we need to consider when, you know, we're, we're writing any program. So conjugate split, who's the right person? Someone that wants to improve strength and power, someone that wants to potentially compete in powerlifting, someone that wants to compete in any strength and power sport, even CrossFit. I think that there's a lot of parallels with the conjugate system in CrossFit. And it's actually funny. I use the conjugate method with my CrossFit gym when I owned a gym. I think that's what put me on the map as a coach. I had a lot of people interested in what we were doing and that translated to me starting a business where I wrote programming for CrossFit gyms and over 200 gyms. Over 30,000 people a day were using this style of program. What a, it's crazy to me to say, but we had a lot of people using our program. We were getting a lot of data points and because of that, um, we were able to see what worked and what didn't work and of course, um, iterate and make improvements to it. Now, present day, the things that I've learned from having that unique experience programming for CrossFit gyms and programming for a lot of different people has brought me to the current place I'm at with the way I write conjugate programming. So I will tell you, um, if you've seen my conjugate training secrets video, great. If you haven't seen it, might want to watch that. There's a lot of important things in there. I think that the way I write the style of programming is different and um, it is more sustainable and more for the everyday athlete, someone that wants to still be competitive, but do so in a way that is going to take into consideration their longevity and how they feel outside of the gym. Those are all important things. So conjugate split, who is it for? Someone that knows how to train, someone that knows how to squat, hinge, lunge, push, pull, carry. Someone that if you ask them what their max deadlift was, they can probably rattle off their last three maxes. That's someone that's probably a good fit for the system and knows what they're doing. Now, if you don't know that stuff, it's probably not the right fit for you. You probably need to learn how to do the foundational movement patterns before you get into something that is uh, a little bit more complicated. The way I'm gonna write this program today is gonna be very simple. I There's no rehearsal to this. I don't have a plan right now. I'm gonna do this based on how I do this, which I've done probably hundreds of thousands of times at this point, so it should be pretty organic, but I have an idea in my mind and I'm gonna go with it on camera and see how it plays out. And of course, if you guys have questions, ask them in the comments. So the right fit, someone that's advanced, someone that wants to improve strength and power, and you know we're gonna actually look, think about where is the person training. Um, one of you asked, hey, I take into consideration where someone's training and their equipment. Yes, you should 100% do that. That is a, an, an important part. Now, I wrote the last program based on me. So for the purposes of um, just kind of getting that out of the way with this program, we're gonna work with someone that has a well-equipped home gym, but doesn't have a ton of specialty equipment um, and someone that is training from home, obviously home gym. 
So with that said, conjugate, we can strip things down and not have it be as special or specialty equipment, if you will, and make it uh, play out pretty well, especially in the home gym space. But I will tell you, I think that conjugate can be done in a home gym space pretty easily. And just by virtue of the way things are structured and some of the strategies we use, I think there, it can be done very, I guess, easily. But there are some things that I would like to see someone have. I would like to see you have resistance bands. I would like to see you have a drag sled. I would like to see you have dumbbells and kettlebells. So that's the type of things that we're thinking about. We're thinking about a squat rack, pull-up bar, obviously a barbell. A trap bar would be a nice addition. Doesn't necessarily, no, doesn't have to be a make or break thing. I think a sled, one of those things, I even say this in my conjugate program. If you're on a conjugate program, there's gonna be sled work in it. If you don't have a sled, get a sled. They're a hundred bucks. Um, or you can invest in a nice sled like the Torque sled. My link is in the show notes. So let's get on with it. Let's get on with the good stuff here. And um, uh, some of you guys said last time that you were down for a longer video. So I'm not gonna slow myself down. I'm gonna go with this and see what happens and um, see where this takes us. So we got essentially, if we think about this conjugate split, We've got day one, we've got day two, but because of what we're doing with this program, we're gonna have four main strength sessions. This is going to be a heavy lower. And it's funny, there's a few different ways that we can do this. And I think that one of the things I wanted to get out of the way with this program is I want you to be able to execute this between Monday and Friday, which changes things as far as like where we're gonna put certain sessions, it changes things. There are other ways that we could do this. My uh, conjugate program uh, in the Train Heroic app is structured a little bit different. So I'm doing this on purpose because I think that there are a lot of people that end up moving things just to suit their schedule. So with that said, we're gonna do things like this. Speed upper, and this is gonna be our aerobic. And this is gonna be speed lower, and then day five is gonna be heavy upper. Okay, there's our template. Now, day six could be another aerobic. It could mirror this, it could be some GPP work. We could fit some GPP in there. This is our template, okay? So again, working from a home gym, we're getting the main sessions in Monday through Friday, which I think is an advantage for a lot of people. Um, I do tend to see that, you know, people get older and I will see that this is the thing that happened to me is I got older and I had more responsibilities and kids and things like that. The weekend gets harder. And even with a home gym, you think like, oh, it's easy to get in there. It's not that easy to get in there on the weekend. And I'll be honest with you guys, once I get to Saturday, I kind of don't want to go in the gym. I kind of want to like do things outside. But needless to say, I think this is a, a split that works really well for people. Now on my CXC program, we go heavy lower, heavy upper, and then this is an aerobic day, this is an aerobic day, and then day five is speed lower, and then day six is speed upper. So it plays out over the course of a week. So if you're on CXE currently and you wanna use a split, you certainly could, all right? Um, but know that you know there are some concessions that you make when you do that. So if we think about how this plays out, and notice that I didn't say max effort, I didn't say dynamic effort, which this is gonna be a dynamic effort day, but we do mix some other things in. Um, I like to keep it a little bit more general because max effort to me, and the way I learned it from Louis Simmons is a one rep max. It's the most load that you can move in a singular effort, okay? So when we think about heavy, we think about things like sub-maximal effort method, which is a multiple rep max. We think about things like cluster sets and wave loading um, and potentially higher rep maxes that, that could potentially fit in here. So there is some, some, uh, some nuance to that. So I like to keep it a little bit more general. I also don't like to confuse people. If I put dynamic effort, max effort, or maybe I put cluster sets, cluster set lower, that would um, translate to more questions. And I want less questions. I want people to get in and train. Okay, so those are things. Again, kind of little things to think about with the program is that the least confusing, the better. I did a program review recently. I didn't name any names. That was a very confusing program. And honestly, it presents roadblocks to people. We want to remove the roadblocks. People already have enough roadblocks to get into training. And again, not to get off a point here, but I think this stuff is important and you're not going to hear many people talking about it. So heavy lower, uh, speed upper, aerobic day, speed lower, heavy upper. Okay. So we have a nice amount of balance. We have a nice amount of diversity. We go essentially from a very intense day to you know, another intense day, but definitely you know, we're working on different aspects of the force velocity curve. We've got a force component, we've got a, a velocity component. So again, it works really well within the split. Okay, so if we just thinking about heavy, typically it's gonna look something like this, one, two, three, and I'm gonna do singular exercises. Usually I don't do a lot of pairings, supersets with our heavy lower day. So this might be 
let's say a squat pattern. And let's just say we're doing a, if we're, if we're thinking about progressing this over time. And for me, it's a three week wave. I might do something like a heavy three and then week two, do a heavy two. And then week one, do a heavy one or a one rep max. So we've got some room there. And this would be like a three minute rest, uh, big lift. This would be a GHR glute ham race or an RDL. Um, I know we said home gym. Most of my people that are using a conjugate program, my CXC program, have a glute ham raise, believe it or not. Um, so I think this is a staple in a conjugate program. Louie used to talk about accumulating, you know, anywhere from 60, 70 reps per week, which I think you certainly can do. And it has a profound effect, certainly on your ability to pull more weight and squat more weight. Um, so I think this is a phenomenal uh, pattern, um, but not everyone has access to it. So you could do an RDL pattern, and this could be something like four sets of six to eight, with 90 seconds rest. Um, and then we could do a single leg. And this might be three sets of eight to 10 each with 60 seconds rest. And then this is where we sometimes can get into having a little bit different way to end the session. Now, very simplistic way to, would just be to do something like this, something like this, where we do um, you know, some type of hinging pattern, maybe a pull through. I personally, if you have a reverse hyper, that's where I would put it. And I usually crank the volume with both of those four sets of 25 with 60 seconds rest. And then I would do some type of abdominal work here. So some type of weighted sit up. And again, you can, Westside's a big believer. They pump the volume up quite a bit on that. I've, I've really never seen any difference between going ultra high volume and going moderate volume. Um, the main thing is, is that we're getting a full range of motion. We're getting, you know, a good stretch position. I like a reverse sit up on a, a GHD. That's a great one. And you know, needless to say, there's, there's some things that you could potentially go with there, but I don't think we need to go anything beyond three sets, 12 or 15. And of course, again, you could go heavier and potentially change the scheme. But just for the sake of argument here, this is what we have. Now, there are times when we might want to include some anaerobic work. So this might look something like this. And I did this actually on my last program but I might do a sled push sprint and a kettlebell swing and something like three to four rounds with you know three minutes rest between sets. Okay, so that's an option. All right, now take a screenshot or whatever you guys have to do. This is in the show notes. So I'm gonna erase this because I need the room to write. This is obviously a bigger program, but this is our day as a whole. Now our speed day could look very similar to this and it might, um, but we're obviously going to have a little bit difference in terms of how the first few exercises play out. So I just want you guys to keep in mind what we did on the first day and we will move on and, you know, kind of pick apart what we're going to do for future days. So moving on, now we're going into a speed upper day. And this, for the most part, if you think about classic conjugate, typically speaking, there's going to be speed bench. We're using accommodating resistance. And I, I want to say that this program does not require accommodating resistance. Accommodating resistance is a tool like anything. It is particularly beneficial with speed work. And I actually, it's funny. I just saw a post recently um, talking about how it's, it's not necessary. Well, it really depends whether or not it's necessary. Accommodating resistance works incredibly well with speed work. For instance, if you are using 50% of bar weight and 25% of band or chain, you're going to be able to move faster because you're not using 75% through full range of motion. So you're going to be able to move faster. If you put 75% on the bar and you move as fast as you can with it, I guarantee you, if you took out a tendo unit or you measured it, use some velocity base, um, there's a, a bunch of them now to measure bar speed, you would be faster using 50% plus 25% combination resistance. So it's an incredible tool for rate of force development. And that's how I would recommend if you are using it, investing in it, that's how I'd recommend using it. Of course, there are other things too, but um, that's something that, you know, again, it's a tremendous tool for dynamic effort training. If you are someone that is serious about training and you're looking for peak results year round without having to sacrifice your body, download my free programming sample. The link is in the comments. So usually this would be a speed bench, a press pattern. But what I like to do on my upper day is actually a little bit different. I like to use pairings on this day because again, we're thinking about, we have people that need to get in. They need to be in and out of the gym in 60 minutes. We don't want to spend all day. So I like to go something like this for my upper days. Excuse me, this is going to be 2B. So speed bench is our speed strength. And then we could go with 
dumbbell snatch. Maybe this is six by five and a six by two each. And there's 45 seconds, 45 seconds between each exercise. So I do my speed bench, five reps, probably about 40%, 40% plus chain. If you don't have any combination resistance, you could use 50 to 60%. You just want to be explosive as possible. And I think that going lighter is better than going heavier with dynamic effort training. So six by five and six by two. So you do your speed bench, five reps, you rest 45 seconds, you hit your dumbbell snatch explosively, two reps on both sides, rest 45 seconds, and you do six rounds of that. And again, it's work rounds, all right? So those are my first pairing of the day. And again, this is my speed day. And then my first or my second pairing would be likely something to do more push pull. So um, we could do a close grip bench, we could do a dumbbell bench, and we could do a pull up or a chin up. All right, and maybe this is four by six to eight, relatively heavy. Um, this could be weighted if you have the ability to do weighted pull-ups. And then I would likely do some higher rep work to end things, maybe some bamboo bar. And again, I know I said no specialty equipment, but bamboo bar would be an option. Um, you could certainly do a, a push-up or a push-down. We could do a lot of different things that could potentially fit in here. Uh, but just for the sake of just this program, what, what I want to do is some push-down variation or even a rollback. Don't forget, we've got another upper body day. So this is unlike a full body program. We've got three sessions. We've got four main strength sessions here. So let's go with some rollbacks, assuming you don't have any elbow issues. And let's go with some face pulls or direct arm work. Again, a lot of things that we could potentially do here. And 60 seconds rest. Okay, so that's day two. If you guys have questions thus far, just drop them in the comments and I'm happy to get those answered for you. Day number three, we're gonna go 30 to 60 minutes of cyclical. And what I love to do with conjugate is do some light sled drags for longer durations. So I might make this be 10 minutes sled pull forward, 10 minutes sled pull backward, 10 minutes sled face pull, 10 minutes sled extensions. And what do we got, 40 minutes there? And do something of that nature for that day. And then maybe they just do some, some steady state cardio on the air runner, air bike, or what have you. And of course, some other things that are, are classic to conjugate or high rep band work. You could do some high rep push down, some high rep pull aparts, um, 100 to 150 total reps. That fits in there. And this is a great way to bridge the gap to get to this next day. And it's also a great way to build the aerobic system. Um, now, is one day enough? Probably not for most people. However, the goal here is strength and power. So if the goal was conditioning, then maybe we would use a hybrid split, like uh, a lower and upper and then a full body day. And then we have the ability to do more conditioning. Now that's another video for another day. We can go through that split and what that looks like. And that's another split that I've used extensively over the years with a lot of success. But for right now, you guys that are watching this, we're focused on strength and power. So that's where we're going. So um, moving on, we got speed. Lower, what does speed mean? Speed can mean a lot of things. It could mean explosive strength, plyometrics. It could mean speed strength, speed pull deadlift, box squat, power clean, hang snatch, whatever works with the person, all right? So again, we've got someone highly advanced. Olympic lifting is not something I use all the time with my main conjugate program, but it's something we do from time to time because it's a good thing to do. I'm actually, it's funny. I went through a period of, I love Olympic lifting. I hate Olympic lifting. I don't mind Olympic lifting. Eh, I'll do Olympic lifting a few times a year. And that's kind of how my, my span as a coach has gone. I loved it when I was doing CrossFit. And then I got so beat up from doing it so frequently that I started to not like it. And of course, you know, for thinking about kind of the greatest good for the greatest number, Olympic lifting is a tough thing because we don't know everyone's ability. But needless to say, I think we're gonna keep this more simple and we are gonna go with a plyometric, so some seated, box jumps, and this could be eight times three. For Lipin's chart, if you're not familiar, look it up. It's a good thing to use for volume prescriptions. It works really well, actually for everything, for heavy and um, heavy and speed. But needless to say, you know, it's a good guide to use. Sumo speed pulls, go eight times two. And again, accommodating resistance, if you have it, use it. Um, the good thing with speed pull deadlifts is you can drape a bar, a band over the bar, you don't need a whole lot of extensive setup for that. Now, is the band tension enough? If you've got a six, 700 pound deadlift, probably not. If you've got a 400 pound deadlift, then yes, you could drape a band over the bar and get what we need to get from it. Um, but just for the sake of this, we're gonna say 50% and we drape a band over, all right? And you'll probably, again, are you gonna get 25%? You know, probably not for most people, but it's a strategy to use and it works. 
So we've got eight times three. This is gonna be like every 60 seconds. This will be every 60 to 90 seconds. I've actually, over the years, gone from less rest for dynamic effort work to more rest. And the reason for that is I find that usually the limiting factor with dynamic effort work is people's ability to have good motor patterns across multiple sets and be explosive. And I find that, you know, work capacity is usually the limiting factor with that. And knowing that we can go a little bit longer in the rest and still get a lot from it. So 60 to 90 seconds. And of course, if you have someone that is, um, you know, maybe this eight sets, maybe the first four, they're like smoked and, you know, it doesn't make sense to, to move on from there. Maybe we go every two minutes or something like that, where we're just giving them a little bit more rest to build that over time. So that's something that you might want to take into consideration. And then of course we could go with, again, what have we done? We've done some jumping. We've done some uh, hip hinging. We could go with some single leg again, or even a squat. I love the skater squat. I know a lot of you guys uh, on my program hate it, but I love it because you guys, some of my strong guys in deadlifting, um, Jared and Tritty, shout out to you guys deadlifting, you know, 700 plus pounds. <laughs> These guys get with a skater squat. And of course it requires a lot more than um, strength. It requires motor control. It requires obviously, you know, having some balance. Um, so that's a variation that I really love not to get off the, the point, um, but it was actually in my, my squat video. If you guys saw that, and then we go with another hinge and again, a reverse hyper or a swing or um, a dimmel deadlift. Let's put a dimmel deadlift in here. That's a nice uh, conjugate, nice conjugate variation um, where it's done for very high reps. It's usually done at a percentage of what your max deadlift is. So usually around 30% for three sets of 30. Again, six, I would go 60 to 90 on that. And you know, for some, we could go a little bit longer if we need to. And then I like a heavy load to carry here. Okay. So we're, we're coming up on our final day here of this program, but we've done a lot so far. We've done a heavy day for lower. We've done a speed day for upper. We've done a speed day for lower. Now moving on, if we're going to think about our final day of this five day plan, what do we have left? We've got our heavy upper. The first thing that comes to my mind is a floor press. And we could follow the same schedule where we do heavy three, heavy two, heavy one. That's a three week wave. Week one is heavy three, rest three minutes between sets. Week two is a heavy two, rest three minutes between sets. And again, you build to that over the course of six, seven, eight sets, however many sets you need. Guys like Jared and Trini that I mentioned, they're probably gonna need eight to 10 sets because they're super, super strong dudes. Someone that has, you know, a floor press of 225 pounds might need five sets, six sets. Um, so gauge your own strength off that. Take as much as you need. Some of you out there, I, I see people all the time ask questions. How do I build in weight? Progressively build in weight. If you are someone that has a 135 floor press or a projected floor press, start with the bar, add 10 pounds, do three reps, add 10 pounds, do three reps, so on and so forth, and build up to that weight with, a, with an idea of where you wanna go. So if you think your max is 225 and you wanna hit a five pound PR, then have a plan of how you're gonna get there. And of course you could write this out. This is why I have this whiteboard here. Um, I don't use as much because I don't do as many maxes anymore, but you know, I would write it out. This is what I used to do when I would, you know, any type of max ever work, I would write it out and know exactly where I wanna end. And I would always shoot for a five pound PR, okay? So floor press, and what I would do here is I would do some banded pull apart between sets because no one ever regretted doing a little bit more upper back work. And I would just do 10 reps between set. And then we do our heavy three and however many sets. So let's just say it's six sets. We've done 60 banded pull aparts. We rest three minutes between sets. We knock out 10 banded pull aparts. Pretty straightforward, right guys? And I see that I'm going to run out of room here. So <laughs> this is a little tricky, but um, we'll make it work. So 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. There's a lot of ways we can go here, but I think that one thing that I've mentioned a lot of my reviews is making this easy for the end user. So they're not like looking at the app and being like, what's going on? Where am I going? What is, why is it so different? I would keep it very similar. So I would go with another press. I'd probably go with an overhead pressing pattern. I'd probably go, we did a heavy uh, chin up, chin up here. You could go with a pull up, but I'd probably go with a row variation, chest supported row. And again, you know, four sets, eight to 10, something like that. Um, and I would do, what I would do here, guys, is I would rest 45 to 60 seconds between exercise. So we'd hit our heavy overhead press. Maybe we're building a weight across four sets. And then I would rest 60 seconds and then I would hit my row 
eight to 10 reps, rest 60 seconds. And I would repeat that across all four of those sets. Okay. And obviously there are things to consider like the RPE. Is it, uh, is it work sets? Am I doing four work sets with the overhead press? Am I building a weight? That's something that you want to distinguish in your program. So if we're doing an overhead press and we're building a weight, then say that in your program, Hey, we're going to end on a, on a load. That's going to allow us to have one to two reps in the tank. And then maybe our row is going to be a workload across all four of those sets. And then for this final stuff, I'm actually, I'm going to move this over here so you can see everything. We're going to do some burnout work. We can do, uh, you know, a push up and, um, some direct arm work on the homework girl. And for the push up, I would go with sub max reps. So you do a set of as many reps as you can. That's one shy of failure. So say it's like 20, 18, 16, and then your dumbbell hammer curls, you do eight, set, eight, eight to 10 reps per set for three sets. You just go back and forth. And after you do this exercise, you rest 60 seconds and then go back to your push ups. Okay. So again, pretty straightforward. Let's recap. So we've got our heavy day. We're building to a heavy three. We're going to progress that across three weeks. We've got glute ham raises. We've got single leg work. Of course, reverse hypers could fit in there. You've got exercises like the dimmel deadlift, which is a staple. And again, the, the upper body days are pretty straightforward. There's really not a whole lot of complexity here as far as the way this is structured. Um, but this allows you to do what we want to do with this program, which is build strength, improve rate of force development, but also not skimp out on our GPP work. Now, if you have a sixth day, you could repeat this day on Saturday, or you could do some steady state cyclical work. Again, I think a lot of people love pulling a sled. People that are very much in the conjugate world, they love pulling the sled. Go pull the sled for 30 minutes. I mean, it's not easy to do, but it'll certainly, um, it'll certainly fit within the confines of the program. It'll build work capacity. It'll l l lend itself to everything else that we're trying to do in this program. So really that's it guys. Not a whole lot else I want to say other than this is a really great way to train and it's very simple when done right. If you follow good fundamentals of program design, if you have a plan in place with where you want to go, what direction you want to go with, with all these exercise variations, it can play out really well. You've got some novelty there where we're varying things every fourth week, you're doing new variations. And honestly, guys, the fourth week when you do new variations, they should be very similar. I like to just keep continue to build. So if we do maybe week one is a, a split squat, week two is a reverse lunge, week three, or excuse me, week wave three rather, would be a rear foot elevator. You can go a lot of different directions with just varying the exercise selection and making small tweaks from block to block of your training. So that way you're just building, you're building, you're building. And it's not all this random shit thrown out where people are like, have to essentially relearn every time there's a new block of training. I don't believe that should be the case. I believe that we want to improve consistency and that's a great strategy to use. So this is a phenomenal way to train. I tend to see that people like the seasonal style of training where they're focused on different goals at different times of the year. This is a great way to train during like the fall to winter. So anywhere from like September to December, where you want to focus on more gaining lean tissue and of course, gaining strength and power. That's a great way to do it. And then, you know, come first of the year, people usually want to get leaner. And that's when we might opt for more full body training where we can use some more metabolic conditioning and certainly be a little bit more efficient with our time and have less rigidity. But this is a phenomenal style of training. And I think that people will get great results, but they won't be beat up. And that's what we want. We want maximum sustainability with training. It's not about getting to your best that you can, you can be. It's about being your best that you can sustain 365 days a year. So this is it. I love the style of training. Um, my conjugate, all my programs are conjugate. <laughs> I just want to say that again, that my full body training is conjugate. My, obviously this is conjugate. I have a hybrid split. Um, what do you guys want to see for the next video? I love this split, but I do think that there are some people that fit into a hybrid version of this. So I think I'm going to maybe go over that in the next one, but for future whiteboard videos, let me know what you guys want to see. And I'm happy to get that going for you until next time, guys, results are king.